You are listening to Book Clips, a podcast where authors and narrators expose you to excerpts from different books. You can find the show and more by searching for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean or Stitcher. Hi, Annette Mori here, and I'm going to do a reading from my debut novel, Love Forever, Live Forever. Wow, blast from the past. It's the summer of 1998, and it's unseasonably hot for late August in Seattle. I'm sweating so bad that I have big armpit stains on my tank top as I scrutinize the old brick building. Students are bustling about resembling ants in front of an anthill. The old brick building is their anthill. My dad is pulling books and CDs out of the back of the Honda. My mom is squinting in the sunshine, politely taking it all in, and I can tell that she doesn't like what she sees. The building is old. The rooms are small, and there is a decidedly musty smell to the place. Mercer Hall appears to be the oldest, most run-down dormitory that the University of Washington offers to their freshman students. Of course, they assign that dorm to me. I'm a reluctant student, but I'm not really given an option. All the Jorgensen girls will go to college whether they want to or not. Getting a full-ride scholarship sure doesn't help my cause. Dad doesn't see the humor in blowing off my scholarship and traveling around Europe until I can see myself as a college student. I don't give the building much thought one way or another. My attention is hijacked. As soon as I glance down the hall and notice the hot redhead casually leaning against the wall. My parents don't know about my preference for women. The redhead catches me staring and winks. I'm not sure who she's winking at, so I turn my head around looking for who this hottie can be winking at. There is no one else in the hallway, and I start blushing as I realize the wink is intended for me. I can't let my parents see me staring, so I look away and focus on my family, who are all loaded up with my belongings as they enter the narrow hallway. Hey, Nikki, which room is yours? This junk is heavy, my sister calls out to me. Don't get your panties in a bunch. It's right here, room 210. Who asked you to come here anyway? I act like I don't want my sister here seeing me off to college, but I really do. My younger sister Tess is my best friend. We are only one year apart in age, and we always hang out together. I'm really going to miss her, but I can't admit that to her. Nikki, be nice. You know you're going to miss Tess, so stop acting like you're all tough. For some reason, my mom feels compelled to point this out. Well, this building has a certain amount of old-world charm, my dad, the eternal optimist, remarks. you got to be shitting me. This is the oldest dorm on campus, and it's not some historical landmark, Dad. It's just old and worn down. I can't help being a little snarky. Remember, I want to travel the world, not live in some old musty building with a bunch of silly freshman girls who are trying to find some hot guy to shack up with. (sighs) For such an intelligent young woman, you sure find it hard to resist using profanity. Really, Nikki, I thought we taught you better than that. My mom seems to forget her colorful language when she's pissed at my dad. I just want them all to drop my shit off and leave me to get settled. I also want to find the red-headed hottie. If I'm lucky, she lives in the worn-down rat hole I'm about to spend the next year of my life in. You know, the drive back to Oregon is really going to be really long if you don't head back pretty soon. I got it from here. Let me just get the last box from the car and you can be on your way. Are you sure? You don't need my help setting up your room? My dad wrinkles his forehead and gives me that concerned parent look. Not from you, Dad. You don't know a Phillips from a flathead screwdriver. And don't even get me started on your propensities to smash your fingers, or worse, mine, whenever you wield a hammer. I'm not trying to be mean when I tell my dad this, because everyone in my family knows this about my dad. What about dinner? Will you be able to get a chance to eat tonight? Are you sure you don't want us to take you to dinner before we leave? I suspect my mom throws this out there as a final attempt to delay their inevitable departure. It's always about the food for my mom. 
Mom's way to show love is to ensure we are all well fed, and it's a miracle I'm not 300 pounds. I barely escape high school with only an extra 10 pounds, and I'm a little nervous about what my freshman year will bring. I've heard about the freshman 10, which will make me a disgusting 20 pounds overweight. I've got some granola and other snacks for tonight, so really, you guys should head out so you can get home at a reasonable hour. The waterworks begin, and my mom predictably starts crying. Oh, all right, I suppose we should get going. I can't believe my baby is in college. I notice that Dad is trying not to let it show, but I see a tear escape from his eye. I even see Tess get a little choked up. It's mass hysteria, and I catch it from my family. I can't help getting misty-eyed, too. It isn't my fault that my eyes start watering with the whole damn family starting a crying jamboree. Okay, that's my reading from Love Forever, Live Forever. And my name is Annette Mori. Thanks for listening. This was an episode of Book Clips. Check out the show notes for more on this book. And it would be great if you would rate the show and subscribe to the Lesbian Talk Show podcast channel for more woman-centered content. If you are an author of lesbian fiction, then send us your reading. You can find out how on the lesbiantalkshow.com slash reading.